Welcome back guys. All right, so we're working on the cam angle sensor because we've removed the distributor drive uh, and fuel pump drive off this We have this so I'm going to turn up <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to turn up a flange make a cam angle sensor CAD a housing printer housing and if that works, we're going to cast it in aluminium run a cam angle sensor now I don't want to run a crank angle sensor on this. Um, I want to keep it as neat looking as possible and even with this, I'm considering putting the sensor from vertical down, so you can't see it. But, let's get into this. So this part fits. Problem is, it's not really going to work what I want. So, I'm thinking we might stretch the outer out a little bit, make it a ring, do some jazzing about, and see if we can't make it a two-piece with like a cup cover up here-ish to cover over a bigger trigger wheel. Yeah, that'd be nice. But it kind of fits-ish. Some adjustments will be fun. But this is why I love 3D printing, because, oh, that's no worries. We'll... If we throw that bit in the bin, it's cost a couple of bucks, and you know, this took two hours to print. It's very low quality, but that gives me an idea. All right, let's uh, play around and cut a bit more. Here's version two. Now, I'm not actually even going to bolt this one to the engine, I'm just using this as ideas. So, a bit of a change up in plan. What I'm thinking of is a press on shaft sleeve yeah probably more of a sleeve than a shaft that'll go to the end of the cam in this housing will be brought back there'll be a seal that'll seal on that shaft then cam angle cam trigger wheel wow memory blank we'll go on this on basically where the that flange is sensor can mount up top and poke down into it and then just a dust cap over it Sounds like it'll work. Well. There we go. It's not the nicest, but it'll do. Alright. So that's the collar. Around here, there'll be bolts to bolt the Hall Effect sensor to it. And then it'll be pressed onto about there. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm flipping stoked with that. And you can see there's a little bit of cam trap on there. I'm going to have to trim the end off the cam. That's fine. That's where your cam angle sensor obviously will go. But yeah, I'm really happy. There's a few changes to design they've got to flick through before we go for the final casting one. But as an actual part itself, that would actually function until it got too hot. Sweet. Now, the other thing I've done is create a fake one. So, as you can see, this is actually quite tight. You can see a little ring in there. So that clamps down. Hold that in the vise. A bit of tape over it. 
There's your markers to drill your 5mm holes to tap your M6 threads. Then we get a new bit of, of uh, mild steel. We cut a 22mm hole in it, we plonk it on, and then we run the three holes for the, the three bolting holes through that itself, bolt it together, use this as a template. All right, let's do that. Down, so you gotta make sure you lined up, no real interference, other than a little bit of size there. enough. Alright, so I've got some 50 by 3 flat bar, cut a hole in it with the step drill, 22mm, same size as the shaft on the cam. So you might be wondering, why have I put this in the lathe? So I want it round so the trigger works well, so this is the easiest way to do it. And once we're done with this, I'll start um, cutting some teeth. And there we have it. One cam angle sensor, where we timed up and tapped on. All right, pretty proud of that one. So we're the engine out of the car now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is tape up this hole here and I'm actually gonna shorten the camshaft. Timing mark. All right, so this one was something I put in a little bit later when I was at the design, thought it'd be kind of essential. Turns out it is. So when you line up these marks, it will give you at number one, compression stroke top dead center, so total top dead center. It will set your timing, or sorry, the blank missing tooth to 180 degrees out. Now in my ECU and the Speedwino, you just put that number in and Bob's your uncle. So hopefully, other ACUs are the same, but otherwise, all these points are all known, so it's pretty easy to make up another template and just cut another trigger wheel to suit 
whatever timing the EC or if we change ECU or anything like that. It's actually quite simple to do in CAD, just rotate it to how it's got to be. So let's, let's line it up, um, time it and put it on. TDC. All right, so a little bit of a note while I'm doing this. The other day, when I was researching this project. Okay, so a note while I'm doing this. The ECU we're using for this project is called a Speedway Note. It's an open source, very cheap um, DIY ECU. So when you buy it, you can buy it just as a blank board. You have to solder it to yourself kind of DIY. So the good part about it is it'll take pretty much any sensors, triggers I want to use. The bad part is when you don't know where to start, you don't really know where to start. So the other day I posted on the Speedway Note Facebook page. Now, I usually don't post on the Facebook pages asking for advice because you don't tend to get advice. You tend to get opinions pretending to be advice. Anyway, so I posted on there and to my absolute amazement, the information was awesome. The guys in there, there was no silly people. A lot of people said just adapt something else to it and that's logical and that's what I would have done if I wasn't the kind of guy who wanted to make this whole kit. So, on there, chatting away to a bloke, look, he's a guy who owns DIY EFI. So I was literally getting advice from the bloke who makes these things and clicked on his profile and there was just like all these massive horsepower drift cars all running these tiny little DIY ECUs. It's pretty cool to see. But, moving on. So, we're running the, so this cam angle sensor we're using you can buy them generically off eBay. They're just like a threaded sensor. If you search cherry sensor. And the reason we're running that is because the guy who designed the ECU said it's the best one to use. It's just not the kind of information you get from most projects. Most projects you post and someone tells you about their uncle's brother who did something. Fascinating. It's quite potentially the first ever cam trigger wheel on a Suzuki F10A engine. That's pretty damn cool. Anyway, so you see I had to cut the end of the cam off just a little bit. It just made all this clearance easier. In actual fact, the next tree wheel I'll make will just be solid rather than have that indent in it. It doesn't need it. Um, if you kept, cut like 15 mil off the end of the cam, you can just measure it off the trigger wheel. Trigger wheel. So it'll allow for a gasket in there to bring that back another about a mil, which should sit about dead center. So the housing screws on. That's pretty flipping cool. All right, so before I close off this video, I want to answer a few questions from you guys. We'll be selling this EFI stuff. 75% um, yes. So, I need to have it running myself. I can't let someone else beat me at my own project, let's be honest. Um, and yeah, I'd like to sell it. It will depend on, after I've got it on my car, how it runs, is it right? You know, I'm not gonna sell you guys something that if the manifold, say, flows way better to one cylinder and melts pistons, I'm not gonna sell you guys that. Um, there's also the fact that if I'm gonna sell them, this has been a lot of work and we're like a quarter of the way in. So they're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be end of the world, but I can guarantee you it will be cheaper to slide a brand new, oh, sorry, a G16B, wire it and all that other stuff in your car than convert your F10A to EFI. But, you know, coolness, important. The other thing I am going along the lines of, currently we're going to be printing inlet manifolds. Now, I'm about 80% confident it's going to work. So that's, that's enough. Um, but I want to print EFI intake manifolds to suit um, 
the LJ80 series and also the um, F10A set. F10A is in the one liters in the Sierras. That'll be a printed inlet manifold, a printed airbox. Um, we might try and track down something with the right size throttle body, maybe charade? Unsure, haven't really looked at that. But if you know something that has about a one liter capacity, the right size throttle body and an electronic idle control, I have no interest in wax pellet crap. We're in the 2020s now. Post the link below, even better if you got one and you want to build an LJ, inbox me. Let's uh, build a thing. But I'm pretty confident we can print intake manifolds straight off out my printer, bottom straight to your engine. Just very high maintenance and a lot of work to set up, but I reckon we'll get there. So, that's what I'm going to leave you with today. If you've enjoyed it and you want to see more, you know what to do. Catch us.